So you are now Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland. Uh, what has the first uh, few days been like for you in Washington, D.C.? Well, the first few days have been interesting because we are doing this in the age of COVID. So we are still getting acclimated. My office is getting set up. We are hiring our senior team. Um, we had the swearing in ceremony, as you know, and we've had a few votes. And of course, as you know, we're getting ready for, you know, the big event on Wednesday so that we can sort of certify this election and move on with getting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris so we can get on with the people's business. What was that swearing in ceremony for you like? I mean, you were on the, you were on the floor. Yes, we were on the floor and we were masked up and, you know, it was surreal to be there. And I was honored to be there with a group of freshmen who I've gotten to know over the past month. And so we were honored to, you know, raise our right hand and take the oath and get sworn in. And you did that, uh, there is a photo uh, in a Korean dress. It's believed to be the first time anybody has taken the oath while wearing that, correct? That is correct. I was wearing what is called a hanbok, and it is a traditional Korean dress that you wear for very special occasions. And Chris, I wore it for a few reasons. I wore it to honor my mother. I wore it to honor my Korean heritage. And I also wore it to you know, send a message about some of the bigotry and prejudice that we have seen bubble up in the last few years, especially against Asian Americans. And so I wanted to send a message that the House of Representatives is the people's house and it is for all people. And we are a stronger nation when we respect each other through our diversity, through our equity and inclusion. And so it was an homage to my mother, to the motherland, but also being very proud to be an African American and Korean American woman serving in Congress to make history. Well, what have you noticed thus far about the, the difference or the differences with Congress in your first couple of days versus the last couple of jobs you've, you've held as Tacoma mayor or as the head of the Seattle Chamber of Commerce? Absolutely. So, you know, I, what I did before was very hyper-local. So I was you know, obviously the mayor of Tacoma, and then I served in a regional role running the Seattle Metro Chamber of Commerce. And this, as you know, is very national in scale. And so I am working with people from all over the country, um, different perspectives, um, different viewpoints, even within the Democratic Party. But, you know, I do say that, you know, with President Joe Biden taking office in a few days, the American people are just ready for us to get on with the people's business. We need to address this coronavirus. We need to get vaccines out to as many people as possible. We need to get our economy back on track and address just some of the issues that have been here long before COVID hit us. Well, you just alluded to the events tomorrow uh, with the certification of the Electoral College. Uh, from, from where you sit and, and what you see, what is your expectation for what will transpire tomorrow? Yeah, so, you know, what will transpire tomorrow is a very long day. And you have some, you know, members of Congress who have decided to contest this. But it is really a sad waste of time. All 50 states have certified this election. There has been no evidence of fraud. Joe Biden won by one of the largest margins in U.S. history. And again, people are tired of this drama and grandstanding. They want us to get on with the people's business. So I am confident that Joe Biden will be seated as president. And you know, we will just do what we have to do to endure this. But at the end of the day, the American people want us to address the COVID, address the economic recovery, and really focus on doing the business that they sent us here to do. Have you talked to any of the other members of the Washington delegation? I know that Representative Newhouse yesterday came out and said that, that he will not block uh, any sort of certification process, uh, that he will, he will vote to certify the Electoral College. Have you talked to any of your other colleagues in the Washington delegation? I have not. So clearly all the Democrats, you know, where we're going to stand. So I've not talked to the, you know, the other members of Congress who represent the Republican side, but I've not heard anything indicating that they will join that foolishness. And so I'm just hopeful that the Washington delegation will stay strong. We will respect the will of the people and move on with certifying this election. So again, we can focus on helping the American people, increasing COVID relief. And for me, getting relief to our cities and states is crucial here. And again, just doing what we can to help ensure that the vaccine gets distributed as widely as possible. Uh, since you just alluded to that, the, the, the vaccine, uh, what do you think about the, the federal government's uh, initial response here? There are several states, including Washington State, uh, that are behind in, in terms of implementing the rollout. I mean, just yesterday, the Washington uh, Secretary of Health, uh, the new Secretary of Health said they're only at 19% uh, 
uh, of implementation uh, in, in regards to the stock on hand and how many people, uh, how many doses have actually uh, been handed out. I mean, what do you what do you think about the initial rollout here in the federal government's? Uh, well, I mean, I think the federal government's handling of the vaccine is just indicative of how they've handled COVID, which is poorly. And so, you know, thankfully, we do have governors and even mayors who are doing their part to try to help, but we do not have a federal coordinated strategy. So I look forward to working with the Biden administration to do what we can to support our states and cities. But again, we have to get the vaccine out to as many people as possible. But unfortunately, you know, the federal response has been lacking and they've just kind of said to the states, you figure it out. And when you have a crisis, a president and the administration are supposed to step up and lead. But again, we have a chance to have leadership when Joe Biden takes office and we just have to get through tomorrow and, you know, let the antics on the grandstanding happen. But the election is legitimate. There was no fraud and the American people are ready for us to do their job, to do our jobs.